Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Stephanie, and I'm Tom. It's our news digest today, and we're going to be talking about a phenomenon that's kind of popular、uh, most recently. I'd never heard of this term before, but it's very popular nowadays, especially in terms of the media and what we're told on the news. And then,、uh, then we're told, you know, maybe a year later, that what they told us. They never told us, so it's lying to somebody、um, in the face of evidence. So you're、mm. gaslighting someone when it's obvious that their eyes are telling them another story,、mm. um, and it kind of freaks people out. They're thinking, "Wait, didn't you tell me this? We're going to tell you the background of this term, gaslighting."、Um, I have to admit, Tom, I I was hearing it on the news over and over. Oh, they're gaslighting us. They're gaslighting. Us. And I thought, what the heck does that mean?、Uh, for me, gaslight just、uh, puts my mind back to the early nineteen, or I guess it would be the early twentieth century when we got、right. uh, electric lights outside. Before that, there were actually gas lights、right. on the streets, and they smell a certain way.、Oh, they、yeah. provide light a different way.、Uh -huh. uh, that's what a gas light is. But basically, gas lighting is just providing incorrect information or misleading information, and that seems to be quite common these days. And the first part of our lesson today kind of、uh, tells us where this term came from. And so, right now, we're going to read through the entire portion of our article and. We'll come back to discuss it. Stay tuned. Merriam-Webster Dictionary marked the year 2022 with the word gaslighting. The origins of this word can be traced back to a 1938 play entitled Gaslight. The story follows a recently married couple. The husband often secretly goes into the attic, which causes the gas-powered lights in the house to dim. However, when his wife remarks on the changing lights, The husband refutes her claim and asserts that they are not dimming at all. The wife begins to doubt her own perception of reality. The husband's scheme gave rise to the original meaning of the term, which Merriam-Webster defines as psychological manipulation of a person over an extended period of time that causes the victim to question their reality. Online searches for this term surged in 2022 by 1,740%. Through social media sites like TikTok, the term gaslighting has evolved from obscurity into a colloquial buzzword. The way in which the word is defined has changed with its rise in popularity. It's now often used to describe deliberately and severely misleading someone, especially for personal gain. The phrase is no longer restricted to a specific form of emotional abuse within relationships, and is now commonplace in political, marketing, and entertainment contexts. Throughout Donald Trump's time in office, a critic claimed that he was gaslighting the public by denying statements he had made previously. The development of the term gaslighting can also be attributed to the convenience of the internet. The internet is an explosion of information, which unfortunately also enables the spread of misinformation. Fraud and manipulation are widespread on the internet. A study showed that 20% of search suggestions on TikTok. Contained incorrect information. Although gaslighting is not a new phenomenon, the public's hyper awareness of this form of deception is. With this increased understanding comes the hope that people will be more cautious about the information they see online. Okay, folks, let's get started. We're talking about gaslighting in the age of misinformation. That's also a very popular word these days: misinformation. Or disinformation, someone giving you information that's incorrect.、Uh, the, or the government likes to use it a lot.、Uh, you'll see it if you're on Twitter. They'll say、well, this is misinformation or this is disinformation.、Uh, it depends on who's giving you the facts.、Uh, it's it's an interesting time in our world. Uh, my my advice to everybody is just to、uh, do some research yourself and make sure that what you're being told is true.、Uh, we get a lot of misinformation in this world of ours, so let's talk about this word. You know, we'll have new terms that will be introduced into English or our language, and we'll often have them added later into a dictionary that makes them official.、Um, 
Sometimes these terms aren't in the dictionary immediately, and so sometimes you can find some of these slang terms or new buzzwords by going online and looking at a website called Urban Dictionary, which has a lot of these phrases before they become official and part of something like Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Right,、uh, Merriam-Webster, of course, is the、uh, main dictionary from the United States.、Uh, if you're studying American English, if you're studying British English, I guess you'd go to the Oxford Dictionary. Although Oxford does have an American English dictionary as well. But in any case,、uh, Webster often、uh, recognizes words for each year.、Mm-hmm. They also have a word of the year,、yeah. but they also <laughs> list some other words that were popular during the year and that were new. And so, yes, they、uh, highlighted or they marked. The year 2022 with the word gaslighting, and the origins of this word can be traced back to a 1938 play entitled Gaslight. So yeah, you're wondering why do we use this term gaslight to talk about misinformation? Where does it come from? Well, you need to do some research and look at old documents, and it can be traced back to a play that came out in 1938.、Uh, a play is like a, a, a live drama performance, and it was entitled Gaslight. So if you talk about the Name of a particular work of of literature or music, you can say it's entitled this.、Uh, this new novel is entitled、uh, "How I、uh, Made a Million Dollars Overnight." Ooh, I would love to be that person who did.、Hmm. Anyway, it was、uh, determined to be the.、Um, One of the words that they were going to add to the dictionary. Now we talked about the origins of this word. As Tom was reading through this, I thought it was、um, interesting. This man was kind of torturing his wife.、Mm. Um, I would say he was definitely manipulating her. You know, we've all seen shows or films. Where someone starts telling this person, "Oh, what you're seeing or hearing isn't what you're really seeing or hearing," kind of making them go crazy or insane. So this this is the origin of this particular term. It can be traced back to a 1938 play. So if it's a play, it's on stage. There are actors who are moving around, saying their words in costumes, and like Tom said, "entitled" just means that's what its title is. So the story follows a recently married couple. Oh, this is even worse.、Mm. They're not even an old married couple. Usually, if you're recently married, you're still really in love and everything's wonderful. Well, this guy is a bad dude.、Uh, the husband often secretly goes up into the attic. The attic is the very top part of the house. Usually, it's the roof, and there's extra space. Uh, sometimes you can make it into a room or a storage area. That's the attic. Well, he goes up there and he causes the gas-powered lights in the house to dim. To dim just means to become less and less bright. So you can sometimes in your house install light dimmers. So you just turn this little knob, and your light goes from really bright to off. Which I really、mm. like. I like those house、uh, light dimmers that some people have. I don't have any. Yeah, I don't、house. either. But of course, sometimes the light is too bright, so you can uh, uh, tone it down a bit. You can dim the lights. However, when his wife remarks on the changing lights, the husband refutes her claim and asserts that they are not dimming at all. So she says, "My dear, the lights in the house get dim every time you go up in the attic." And he says, "Nonsense! That doesn't happen." He refutes her claim. So、mm-hmm. here we've got the word "refute" as a verb. That just means you say. Something is wrong or false. You actually prove it, and so he basically says, "Nope, it's not true. You're just imagining things. It's、uh, your imagination getting away from you." Yeah, and that's why this is so awfully so manipulative. So the wife begins to doubt her own perception of reality. And when you start doing that, you really can drive someone insane. Your perception is how you view something.、Um, it's your understanding of a situation. It's kind of your opinion, your viewpoint.、Uh, people will have different perceptions of situations. Doesn't mean one is right or one is wrong. You just view things differently sometimes based on your background and how you were raised and where you live, things like that. So the husband's scheme. A scheme is a Plan usually a plan to do something that's 
I'm not exactly、uh, good or moral. Or usually, scheme is used to talk about someone、uh, thinking up a way to commit a crime or take advantage of somebody. It's not a it's not a word you usually use in a positive situation. So the husband's scheme gave rise to the original meaning of the term. So if it gave rise to something, it actually. Um, was the reason why this term became a term that people would label the similar situations like this? You see one thing, but you're told that it's it's not what you're seeing, or it's the opposite sometimes. Right, and of course, Merriam-Webster gives us a definition. It defines this word as psychological manipulation of a person over an extended period of time that causes the victim to question their reality. So, if you talk about manipulation, that just means you're using somebody for the, your own purposes.、Uh, you handle or control them.、Uh, you could、uh, manipulate a machine, for example, if you work in a factory or something like that. But if we talk about manipulation of a person, that means you're just kind of playing with their mind and trying to get them to do what you want them to do. And this happens over a long period of time, and eventually the victim starts to question their own reality. Well, maybe you're right. Maybe the lights aren't dim. Maybe it's just my imagination. Ooh, then you really got them.、Um, a good example is perhaps、uh, maybe a press secretary for a country getting up and talking about how、uh, the country's economy is so great, but all of us living in that country are thinking, "Wow, everything's going up. The prices are so expensive for things." What are they talking about? But every day, the media tells you, "No, the economy is great."、Mm -hmm. So what you're experiencing really isn't happening. That's gaslighting, in fact, and we see it sometimes. And it's called manipulation. If you manipulate a person, you get them to do what you want them to do.、Um, I usually see this word being used in a negative way. I can't imagine using this word in a positive way.、Uh, can you think of any situations where you would manipulate somebody and it would be positive? Not really. Yeah, you're yeah. usually just trying to use people to get them to do what you want them to do、yep. against their will, and it will be、uh, an advantage to you and not to them. Yeah. So that's what you're doing for whatever reason. I don't know why the、uh, husband is doing this to his newlywed wife,、uh, but I guess you'd have to see the play or read the play to find yeah, out exactly、yeah. what's going on there. And this brings us roughly to the middle part of our lesson for today. It's time for us now to hear from our Chinese teacher. 听众朋友，大家好，我是安娜。我们来看看去年最夯的字到底是哪一个字呢？这个字就叫做 gaslighting， 中文翻成煤气灯操纵。什么叫煤气灯操纵啊？好，我们赶快来看一下文章的第一段，这很有趣耶。因为其实韦伯大字典啊，他在去年二零二二的时候 mark the year with the word gaslighting。可是你知道吗？这个单字其实起源是在一九三八年一个戏剧，那个戏剧的名称就叫做 Gaslight， 煤气灯下。也就是说，其实煤气灯或者是煤气灯操作这个。这个字根本就一九三八年开始，从那个戏剧开始就有嘞。可是到了二零二二，都经过了好几十年了，这个字才夯了起来，真是蛮有趣的。我们今天一定要好好来看这篇文章。那、嗯、么这个故事呢，就是发生在一对新婚夫妻上啊。那丈夫常常就偷溜进阁楼，然后溜进阁楼的时候呢，就导致屋内的煤气灯就变暗了。接着我们就直接看第四句哦。第四句这边因为有一个 which。补充说明的关系子句，前面加了逗点嘛？可是这里的会取小心哦，它的先行词不是那个 the attic， 并不是阁楼，而是丈夫偷偷进阁楼的这件事情。那你可能会问啊，老师你怎么可能会知道呢？哎，你们要看看这个会取后面带着整个补充说明的关系子句 ，which causes 什么东西导致了 the gas-powered lights in the house to dim。所谓的煤气灯会变弱呢，是阁楼还是丈夫偷偷溜进阁楼的时候的那一件事情，是这个动作导致了家里的煤气灯就变弱了。所以根据文艺来推断，会去应该指的是逗点前面这整句话，要根据文艺来去做推断。好，那这样子他妻子就想说，哎，你怎么上去那个灯就开始变暗啦？那丈夫居然驳斥他说，没有啊，灯根本就没有变暗啊，应应该是你自己有问题吧。
。那其实久而久之就开始怀疑自己对于现实一种感觉，所以这个丈夫的轨迹就促成了这个字啊，所谓的 gaslight， 就变成是说长时间对一个人进行一种心理的操纵，导致受害者就质疑他们所认知的一种现实。第一段的第七句。也很重要哦，因为我们看到也是逗点之后的汇取到句尾的地方有点长，是补充说明的关系子句。那这里就比较单纯，先行词真的是逗点前面的 the meaning of the term， 就是这个词它的意思。The original meaning of the term 是先行词，逗点汇取后面加上的才是尾博字典所给的定义。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We shall now continue with our lesson. Again, we're talking about the word gaslighting. It was Merriam-Webster's word of the year for 2022, and we trace the origin back to a play from 1938. And the play was called Gaslight. In the play, the husband goes in the attic, and that makes the gas-powered lights dim.、Mm-hmm. The wife remarks on that, but the husband refutes her. No, it's not happening. You're just imagining it. You're just imagining it. And so she begins to doubt her own perception of reality. And this, of course, is used nowadays to manipulate the thoughts of people by spreading misinformation, usually on the internet through、uh, social media sites or whatever. Now, here in the next part of our lesson, it says online. Searches for this term surged in 2022 by 1,740 percent. That's a lot. Wow! So before that, people didn't really know much about this word, and then they started hearing it. So they started doing searches for it, and through social media sites like TikTok, the term gaslighting has evolved from obscurity into a colloquial buzzword.、Mm-hmm. Obscurity just means you're in a state that. Is unknown. Nobody really knows about you,、uh, or you, doesn't know about that thing.、Uh, to obscure means to block something. Oh, it's, it was a sunny day, but now the sun is obscured by clouds. So here, it was a term that was、uh, out there somewhere, but nobody really paid any any, any attention right, to it.、Yeah. But now it's a buzzword, which is a popular word, and it's a colloquial buzzword, which is kind of like informal speech. Okay, so、uh, this is now a very common word you hear about all the time. Right for obscurity, you could also talk about someone maybe who was、uh, living out there in the world, maybe auditioning. He wanted to be an actor, so he lived in obscurity forever until he got his big break, and now he's famous. So obscurity,、uh, you're just kind of unknown, yeah.、Mm-hmm. Or something. It could be a meaning of something that's unclear, very obscure. This is、uh, obscure is the adjective form. Obscurity is a noun, of course. So colloquial, as Tom says, it's kind of informal slang,、uh, something that we use quite often,、uh, just in our everyday lives. I would say that、uh, one other buzzword I was just sharing with Tom before we started that I've been hearing is I've got the receipts, the receipts.、Mm. So usually we think of receipts as something that you get or fa piao. After you buy something, they give you a receipt. But、um, nowadays, it's a buzzword for saying, "I've got the proof."、Mm. So,、um, what you're saying is misinformation. I've got the receipts.、Uh, I know you said that in the past. So,、uh, we've got lots of buzzwords that make make it make their way into our language. And Chinese is just the same. It's、mm. fun to see your buzzwords.、Uh, now, the way in which the word is defined has changed. With its rise in popularity, that also happens.、Um, sometimes the word was used in a different way, even fifty,、uh, sixty years ago, and then it'll change. So it's kind of fun. It's、uh, happened with this word as well. Uh, indeed. So we did have the original definition, and now its、uh, definition has kind of changed. It's now often used to describe deliberately and severely misleading someone, especially for personal gain. If you do something deliberately, you do it on purpose. It's not by accident. You did that deliberately. You meant to hurt me. And so, yes, indeed, you want to m- deliberately mislead someone. You're doing it on purpose. You mean to do that, and you're doing it for personal. 
personal gain, and the phrase is no longer restricted to a specific form of emotional abuse within relationships, and is now commonplace in political, marketing, and entertainment contexts. So, yeah, originally we said that it only was used when we talk about emotional manipulation of people, but now it's very commonplace. It's all over the place. It's common. You see it everywhere in political areas. Of course, politicians are doing this all the time in、mm-hmm. marketing when they're trying to sell you a product that you don't want, and also in entertainment when we talk about famous people.、Uh, they're being manipulated, or they're manipulating us all the time. Right, commonplace stuff that happens all the time, or something like a product. It's very commonplace. It's easy to find, so it's commonplace now to use this term. It's interesting that it used to only be applied in、um, emotional relationships. So interesting, because nowadays、uh, people on the TV or a newspaper, or whatever, will use it. Entertainment context, maybe they're gaslighting you in a movie. Uh, we don't know. So here's an example. Throughout Donald Trump's time in office, a critic claimed that he was gaslighting the public by denying statements he had made previously.、Uh, a more more recent,、uh, I guess, example would be Dr. Fauci saying that he had never told us that masks were bad, that we didn't need them, and then he turned around and said, "Oh no, 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 masks, masks, masks."、Mm. So that's gaslighting when people can、uh, point to you telling them something that、uh, is obviously. Untrue or misinformation. So yeah, we've got lots of examples in society today for sure. Moving on to the final paragraph. Okay, it says the development of the term gaslighting can also be attributed to the convenience of the internet. Okay, so here we've got the word attribute, which means you say something is related to something. It can be attributed, or it's because of the convenience of the internet.、Uh, basically, that's what the cause is.、Mm-hmm. So to attribute to something, we could say、uh, the fire was attributed to the earthquake. It、uh, caused a rupture in the gas line, and a fire started. So yes, the fire was attributed to the earthquake. And so this is the convenience of the internet. We can go online all the Time, and so gaslighting is happening all the time. We can't stop it. Yeah, might as well give up on that one.、Uh, we've got lots of people on the internet、uh, spewing out information. So the internet is an explosion of information, which unfortunately also enables the spread of misinformation, fraud. Fraud is when someone tells a lie about something. It could be fraud、um, based on some sort of product they're trying to sell you. They tell you that it will、uh, save your life if you take this mirror. Miracle drug, but it's really just fraud.、Mm. So fraud and manipulation are widespread on the internet. A study showed that 20% of search suggestions on TikTok contained incorrect information. We got a lot of people on TikTok giving、mm. their、uh, opinions and perceptions and viewpoints of things. So you're going to get a lot of misinformation there. Yeah, I don't really use TikTok myself. I kind of、uh, use it passively when my daughter or wife are looking at videos on TikTok.、Mm-hmm. But、uh, evidently, it does contain some incorrect information, and I'm sure that's true of Facebook or Instagram or whatever. All of them. Yeah.、Uh, t- uh, what's the other one with the bird? Twitter. Twitter. Oh、uh, yeah. So although gaslighting is not a new phenomenon, it's、uh, been around for some time. The public's hyper awareness of this form of deception is now awareness refers to when you know. Something exists,、mm-hmm. but if you really know that it exists, and lots of people do, we're emphasizing it with the prefix hyper, hyper awareness. This really high amount of awareness of this form of deception is、uh, all over the public. People in the public know about this form of deception, so at least we know it's out there. Deception, of course, is when you're trying to trick people into thinking a certain way when it's not actually true, and that's based on the word to deceive.、Mm-hmm. The verb you're deceiving me. You're not telling me the truth. Yeah, we sometimes will just take that prefix hyper and use it on its own. If someone's hyper, they're usually overexcited, really keyed up about something,、uh, or maybe they're. Really hypersensitive. They're very, very sensitive. So you can use hyper quite often. Actually, you'll see it if you pay attention to English words out there. You'll see hyper. Okay, guys, that's it for this particular news story. But right now, we're going to listen one more time to our Chinese teacher. 
那你可能想说，一九三八年就有 gas lighting 这个字了，怎么会过了这好几十年呢、啊？怎么会过好几十年才开始整个红起来呢？原来啊，在去年二零二二年的时候，整个线上搜寻量暴增。而且主要就是因为有一些社群媒体，比如说抖音啊之类的，那大家就一直不断的在传 gas lighting， gas lighting 就会变成口语一种流行的用语。那当然，因为这个 gas lighting 变得越来越流行啊，所以定义这个单词的方式开始慢慢产生一些变化。这就是所谓语言是有机体的意思，因为其实它会不断的变化。大家都不用的时候，这语言就死掉；当大家用，或者是用在不同地方的时候，它就增长了，就改变了。我们看一下第二段的第三句。第三句一开始啊，出现是 the way 那个方式，什么方式呢？后面的 in which 从 in 这边开始左挂号，右挂号在 define 的右边。所以其实 in which 是以这种方式，以哪种方式呢？ The word is defined。那个所谓的字被定义的那一种方式 has changed。就整个改变了 ，with its rise in popularity， 因为在 popularity 当中的 rise， 整个的流行的发生。那现在到底还有什么新的意义呢？现在其实常用来就是故意形容，呃，形容人啊，很严重的误导别人，或者是故意误导别人，尤其是为了自己的一个 personal gain， 自身的利益。所以现在如果在说 gas lighting。并不只是局限于人际关系当中特定的一种情感虐待，因为我们刚刚第一段的时候说，好像是一种心理操纵嘛，导致受害者质疑他们本来的认知的事实。所以现在第二段的第六句就很重要喽，因为在 Donald Trump 整个执政的期间，有一个批评者就宣称 ，Trump 借由否认自己先前发表过的言论，一直来煽煽动大众。好，我们来看一下这一句，后面我们看到的是 He was。Gaslighting the public. 有一个 critic， 他宣称 Donald Trump 就在操纵大众 by denying statements， 借由否认 statements 言论，就是自己发表过的。可是这个 statement 是 he， 这里可以左挂号，右挂号在句尾的地方，关系词 which 或者是 that 被省略掉。那这里的限定用法关系子句，特别是针对。这个 Trump 之前自己就曾经做过的一些陈述，曾经发表的一些言论，好，所以现在已经变成不管是这个情感虐待啦，或者是为了自身利益的，无论在政治、行销、娱乐圈中，只要是为了自身利益当中，就是严重的误导他人，也可以叫做 gaslighting。当然，我们刚刚就讲到说，为什么在二零二二年的时候 ，gas lighting 居然过了好几十年，突然整个爆红呢？主要还是因为这种资讯爆炸的网络时代啦。所以第三段呢、啊，就有特别提到这样子的一个原因。不过第三段我们要特别注意一下第五句哦。第三段的第五句，我们看到的是，虽然呢、啊、煤气灯的操纵它不是一个新的现象，但是我们大家对这种欺骗的形式的高度的警觉却是新的。所以希望呢，大家能够在网网络上看到的资讯能够更加谨慎，尤其是有一些社群网站啊，其实它有时候会 gaslighting 很多不同的消息。以上是我们今天的内容，我是安娜，我们下次见。That's it for today, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us, and you can rest assured that when we describe our articles to you, we're trying to tell you the truth as best we can. But you still need to check us from time to time to make sure we're not trying to deceive you or. Gaslight you. Right. From all of us here at English Digest, my name is Tom, and I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.